Hello and welcome to Steve's Retro Loft. Today I'm going to take a look at the Sony KTX 9000 Super View Data Terminal. So what was View Data? View Data is a form of video text, which was an information system from the 1970s. It was used to display text on TV screen. You may be familiar with it in the UK in the form of teletext, initially via the CFAX service from the BBC. This teletext service was simple with selectable pages via the numbers on the remote control. Other than selecting page numbers, there was no interaction with the service. It was purely one way. Now those of a more geeky persuasion will also know that the post office in the UK implemented view data under the name Prestel. Prestel was a dial-up service, which was probably why the post office chose to implement it. After all, more use meant more phone calls and probably more money. Oh, and if you're wondering, yes, the post office dealt with the phone service at the time in the UK. Now both Prestel and Teletext services have the same basic screen setup. It's a 40x24 display grid which can be either text or basic graphics, and by graphics I mean simple blocks. Each location on the grid could display two colours, which were ink and paper. Seven colours were available for both, but you could also have flashing blocks and there was an option to hide and reveal text. The latter function was used on Teletext for some of the games on the service. One further mode was double height text. Naturally, when used, this took up two lines, reducing the amount of usable area for content. Now we've done a brief history of view data, it's time to look at this device. I obtained this unit from a travel agency my wife used to work for back in the late 90s. I knew these were being replaced by PCs, so I had ideas to write a bit of software so that travel agents could use them as a window display. A bit like the travel pages you'd see on Teletext at the time. Now, it turns out I'm a useless programmer. I got so far, then I got stuck. I can't recall which bit I got stuck on, but the idea was mothballed. The gap of 25 years or so in the program hasn't really helped, but I looked at the system and simplified it. I decided to use a simple program which would output text and escape codes to an MS-DOS console, which could then be redirected to the COM port. Initially I tried it via an MS-DOS prompt in Windows XP, but it turned out it didn't work very well with COM port redirection, so I went back to an MS-DOS based laptop and that worked well. Certainly well enough for this demonstration anyway. The terminal worked in two modes, terminal mode and dial-up mode. The terminal was connected via RS-232 at 1200 board. I'm not sure in this mode whether it was synchronous or asynchronous, as the device could operate at both 1200 or 1200 slash 75, and that's 1200 down, 75 up. Y yes, it was that slow. I do remember fast typists would have to wait due to the speed of the uploaded data. Underneath the desk at the agency was a switch box which allowed you to select dial up or terminal mode. And from my messing around with these devices, I can guess that the switch most likely either turned off all the pins or some of the clear to send, ready to send, you know, type pins. You get the idea. Not having the correct pins connected was certainly my experience in getting this device to talk to my laptop. Once the terminal mode was off, the device defaulted to dial up mode. The terminal had a built in pulse dial modem, which you could use to either dial preset numbers or you could type a number to call. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate it as I can't connect the jack plug to anything. Also, being pulse dial, I'm not sure it would actually work anymore. Anyway, it's time in the broadcast for some pages from Steve Text.
hit in the view data button switched it back into terminal mode, so long as the cable worked. In terminal mode, it behaved like many dumb VT or WISE terminals. Although in this example, I've only got the system set up to receive data. Maybe one day I'll experiment with a Linux setup and use it as a TTY device. To get this setup to work, the COM port on the laptop was set to 1200 board, 7 data bits, 1 stop bit and even parity. Now, to communicate with the terminal, you can just output text from the command prompt, obviously redirected to the COM port. However, if you want to output colour or any other modes, you need to send escape codes. Now, you may be able to do this with DOS, but as I'd written something, I thought it'd be best to carry on with that. This particular unit has a list of common commands printed on the front panel. They're very helpful in the early days of trying to get this to work. A different style of keyboard is also available for this device, and I believe this does allow for a better style of editing. But in my case, local editing is an option, as a view data terminal has just been used as a display. Right now you've had a chance to look at some pages. Here's how they actually are written in C. Now this first line is fairly irrelevant to the actual page you can see. Uh, this particular option, this escape code, will effectively draw a new page. Move on to the next line. And you see this, if you scroll down the list, is the double height text. Next setting is for the colour. We'll just scroll along a second in a minute. Now this line is magenta. If you remember, the date was in magenta. And 4C sets the normal height text. Not sure what 5C does. This might actually reset the background colour. I'd have to confirm it. Do ignore my spelling. Next couple of lines is just how C++ uh, sets the date and time variable, and that's the output of the variable to the screen. At the end of that, I need a couple of new lines to bring me back to this line. And then we go to set up the welcomes page, or the welcome message. Again, you've got the option to set the colour and the background. One thing to note, when you start a new line, it cancels out any of the settings you've had in the previous lines. This line is just a, a pretty much a visual aid of 40 characters and how it would look like on normal outputted text. It's handy so you can actually see if you're going to exceed any of it on any of the lines. As you can see on this line there's a, a sort of unwelcome gap so let's have a look and see how that's occurred. If you look at the last character, it's uh, actually, yeah, it doesn't exceed the 40 line, but it is the last character. So there's no need for the new line command afterwards. Again, it helps if I could spell. As you can see on the bottom line, we've got another area where we've set the colour on the paper. And it's self-explanatory. Once you've done it a few times, you do get used to it. OK, we've had a quick look at how the program works. Let's have a quick look at the compiler. So open up Turbo C for DOS. Wait a little while while it settles itself down. And then I'll need to cascade the pages so I can find the one I want to compile. Fingers crossed it all works.
Right, all done. Time to exit Turbo C. Now, if you remember the screen I showed you earlier, there was that random line that just appeared because of the end of the 40 character line. Well, if you run the application within DOS, you can see it all looks fine. The reason for this is because MS-DOS has 80 columns. Let's take a look at another program though. This program is one of the test pages that displays double height text. Let's open up the uh, pages application, just have a, a quick overview of that. So it's quite a simple program really. Uh, normally when you've got all the pages loaded up, you can click all pages. Uh, there's a bit of manual work needed to be done in the background, but other than that, it's quite a simple program. All the code that I've used and demonstrated in this presentation is available on my GitHub. If you take a look at it at uh, github.com Steve's Retro Loft, you can find a few directories in there which contain all the view data applications. They're not the best programs in the world written, but they help me. And so this is the uh, program we looked at earlier in a bit of detail, and the Pages application. and also some escape codes which may help you if you have one of these devices. The display comes with a small stand to elevate the screen for more comfortable viewing. It does also have a plastic cover to protect the display, however I've removed that because it's quite reflective for the video. Often these devices were paired with a printer, the Sony UP101UB, it's a thermal printer. Unfortunately there's very little information about this printer out there, so if you do have one, please let me know. The device also has access to a tape recorder if you need to save or store any of the pages. I've not got any experience of this, but it's something to maybe try in a future episode. The device is interesting as some of the parts make it look like a television could have used the same design. There is a carrying handle and also the rear of the unit has an area where it looks like a telescopic TV aerial could be fitted. Well, that's most likely due to the fact that Sony released a similar unit called the Sony Trinitron KV8100T in some territories. So, to sum up, what use is view data in 2021? Well, for me, it's nothing more than a plaything, something to have on in the background of the channel. Viewdata's use and scope in this entry is probably more of a curiosity rather than a valid business tool. The unit I have myself itself is probably getting on to nearly 40 years old. For 20 of those years, it served in the travel agency working from 9 till 6 o'clock Monday to Saturday, so it's had a hard life. For myself, I kept it stored in a loft and pr probably didn't really protect it well enough, although to credit and Sony's credit, it still works after all these years. Out of all the tech I've used over the years, there's very little information about this Sony unit out there. If you do a search on it, you'll probably find the odd eBay listing for manuals or service manuals, but that's pretty much it. There's very little in the way of how to use, how to set up guides. So if you find this video helpful in any way, then maybe I've done my bit to help promote this little Sony unit. In the comment section below, I'll add some references for teletext and view data, which you may find useful. And thank you for watching. I hope you found the video useful and I hope to see you with another retro episode soon. Bye bye.